In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a PRS on the Yaesu FTM200. The basic, easiest, simple way with not going into the um, advanced things you can do with it on this radio. Just do the basic setup to get you um, transmitting packets and uh, doing all that jazz. So the first thing that you would probably want to do is set the B band to the APRS frequency and you can do this for A band too if you want to 144.390 that's the United States um, APRS frequency for amateur radio so you make sure you uh, have that set in the B band or A band if you desire Next thing we want to do is make sure that our APRS is on, and it is on, and um, if you want to um, wait till everything is set up first, uh, which I'm going to go through in the settings, you can turn this off, but since I have it already set up, it's on right now, um, transmitting packets, but um, I would recommend you turn it off when you have everything set up to make it easier for you. So let's go into the menus. Now, um, in order for APRS to run efficiently, I would recommend you put the dual receive mode to A and B dual receive. That allows APRS to um, receive, um, I'm sorry, the ASU FTM200 to receive both on the A and B um, band um, in the in in the display because if it doesn't, then APRS won't work. Um, even though this is a single receiver radio, um, this allows APRS to work in the background, um, either on A or B band um, um, while you're you know on a on a particular simplex frequency or a repeater. So make sure that this is on um, so that APRS can be on the other band um, in the background. So we're going to scroll through here and I'm going to go through the, um, the, the menu settings that are important um, I guess needed to get APRS working. I'm not going to go through the advanced ones. Let's scroll down here. Hopefully you can see this. How about how the time focusing? So I'm just gonna go through here. APRS filter. I wouldn't mess with this at all. Um, I didn't. So to keep these all on. APRS message text. Now this would be the text that you send to another APRS station through a packet. Uh, I might do a video on this in the future, but uh, if you just want to start transmitting packets from your location, um, you don't need to do anything about this or with this. And again, APRS on my radio is on. Um, I, I would suggest you keep it off until all these settings that you have um, played with are correct and then you can turn it on. Um, APRS mute, so because dual receive A and B is on, um, uh, I personally do not like to hear um, on the receive at least um, the, the, uh, the APRS sound and I'm sure you've heard of the sound before so I don't need to go into it that much but uh, um, this allows you to hear primarily um, your A channel, which is in my case my A channel, what traffic is being passed there, um, and it helps uh, APRS, APRS work more smoothly in the background so you don't have to get annoyed by hearing the, um, the uh, APRS sound. So I leave that on for that purpose, APRS pop-up. Um, the APRS is on, you can have this pop-up on um, 
which gives you, um, I believe it gives you um, all the APRS stations within um, a certain mile or kilometer radius. Um, and again, that's one of the advanced features to, uh, to set up. But basically, if you receive a packet, it will pop up um, on the screen. And um, right now I have those off. Um, I only have APRS for my packet, my personal packet on because I don't want to get the pop-up every time I receive a packet because my packet transmits every five minutes I believe and I'll go into that mode or that um, that that setting in a minute. APRS ringer so this is the actual sound I was talking about um, like I said it's only on for transmit for me but on receive it's off that way um, I don't get uh, the the constant sound from the receive when it's on the B channel. And let's continue down. I don't know what that is. It's probably something similar to APRS Ringer. Um, APRS transmit delay. I have it set to 250 milliseconds. You can change that further, but I think that's default for this radio. APRS units. You could set it however you like. If you're um, in another part of the world, you can set it to um, kilometers or kilometers per hour or meters. But since this is the United States, I have it set to mile, miles per hour, and then feet. And then beacon info. This is the info that um, shows up on your packet um, that you uh, transmit. So your speed slash course, your altitude, and your ambig ambiguity, I think it's what it's called. I have that turned off, but the two others are on. And let's see, beacon status text. Um, this is kind of a message you can put um, behind your packet. Um, gives a little bit more information about your um, about your station if you want. I don't have anything set right now, but you can totally do that if you would like. Um, some people will say, you know, mobile. Um, you know, they put a common frequency they're monitoring. Stuff like that you can put in here. And then beacon transmit set. Um, I have it on auto. You can do this to do this on manual if you would like but to have it be have it be running in the background you probably want to be on auto and then the interval is every five minutes it'll transmit a packet and then digipath um this is default too i wouldn't change this um i would just keep that at wide 1-1 and wide 2-1 this is for most mobile setups um but if you want to if you're transmitting packets outside of your area, you probably want to do um, wide three to one, wide four to one, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to um, have a bigger path for your packet to be um, passed more easily and uh, farther. But like I said, if you're just doing um, packets in your area, you don't really need to change this. And then these are extra ones you can choose. And then APRS call sign. Here's where you can go and enter your call sign and then do your um, SSID, depending on where your station is. Um, I have it set to AP, uh, AI7HE-9 because I plan to put this radio in my vehicle. So I just keep it at APRS- or sorry, AI7HE-9, but you could do um, just AI7HE or your call sign and then do dash one, dash two, dash three, all the way up to, I believe, 15. Yeah, I believe 15 is the highest it will go, depending on um, the type of station that you're operating. And then message group. Um, more options for um, messaging with APRS, I believe. I haven't played around with this. I just do the basic setup for APRS. Um, Message reply, I assume that's for um, responding to APRS messages through packets. Again, I'm only going through, through the basic ones here. Um, 
keep this one at GPS. Um, it's the easiest in my opinion. You can also change this to smart beaconing. Um, but I believe that um, puts more strain on the radio. Um, so just keep it at, at G GPS. It'll just do your GPS location. Let me go back. My position. Um, this is where you can do your manual um, latitude and longitude. Um, of your location if you if this radio is going to be fixed um, that's the option to do that whoops and my packet just transmitted and that's the sound you would hear and then this is the symbol um, of your uh, APRS station so you can do a vehicle you can do a house you can do a whole bunch of things um, I have just mine set to a car because, like I said, I plan to put this in my vehicle. And then position comment. Um, more, I guess, ways to uh, identify your station, um, what it is, what you're doing. Um, I believe this is off duty, um, or there is off duty, on duty, and a couple other ones. Just just to kind of give a thing to the other station, seeing your packet, you know, what you're kind of doing. A lot of options here. Then smart beaconing. Um, like I said, I wouldn't mess with that. It puts a lot of strain on your radio, but it does give a more accurate um, APRS packet, more features that you can see, like, for example, on APRS FI and stuff like that. And you can turn the station list on. That um, usually pops up with the APRS pop-up I was talking about earlier. And then message list when you receive packets. And then beacon transmit select. Keep that on auto. And then this is where you would manually press the beacon transmit. So you, all you do is just do this. Just hold down the dial. Well, that's because it's on the B-band. So let me go back to the B-band. And it should work. Whoops. There we go. So that's how you do it manually. Um, just have to go in the menus. And if everything is set up on your end that you like, well, the settings you can go and turn on a PRS in the function menu and you're all good to go hope this helps